Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. I'm going to start this video out discussing a patent which has been filed by Sony, with the inventor being Mark Evan Cerny. If that name is familiar to you, it's because, of course, he was the lead architect not only for the PlayStation 5, but other consoles such as the PS4 as well. It's fair to say that Cerny has been in the industry for a long time. In fact, he was even working back in the day for titles for Sega. Now, a lot of folks messaged me regarding this patent, and initially I wasn't going to cover this because it's a pretty complicated topic, this particular patent. Um, however, because so many people messaged me regarding it, I'm going to go over its surface level in this video and then deeper um, in a future video. The reason I'm not going super deep in this video is because, quite frankly, I'm still doing the research and I'm actually not at home right now. I'm kind of trapped in London because of uh, tube strikes. You know what? It's a whole thing. But with that said, um, yes, yeah, so this patent is called System and Method for Accelerated Ray Tracing. I'm sure most of you know what ray tracing is, but I'm going to go over it really briefly here. Essentially, ray tracing is the act of being able to more accurately simulate how light, shadows, and other things of that nature would interact in a computer simulation. So, for example, with, with uh, traditional um, lighting techniques such as screen space reflections, they can't accurately portray how light from outside of screen space. You can think of screen space essentially as what's in front of you with the camera. So, for example, with ray tracing, if you have, let's say, a green neon sign behind you, in other words, outside of camera space or screen space, excuse me, then that would be able to provide additional light sourcing, color data, and so on to the scene. And ray tracing is really, really, really computationally expensive. And it's only in recent years that we've been able to run ray tracing in real time. It started with NVIDIA's Turing architecture, which was launched in 2018. Since then, of course, both AMD and NVIDIA have released uh, follow-up graphics cards. And AMD provided the basic architecture for both Microsoft and Sony, of course, for their respective systems. If you want a more detailed explanation as to what ray tracing is, I've actually kind of gone really in depth uh, into the subject with a couple of people before on the channel. The first I would recommend is searching Neil Trevitt, um, who actually works as NVIDIA and he's also one of the chairs, he's one of the heads of Kronos Group, who are responsible for APIs such as Vulkan and OpenGL. And I've also interviewed NVIDIA specifically and AMD and a couple of other folks as well. So ray tracing is a really cool subject, but um, this brings us to today's patent. Also, just um, before I forget, I believe it was Zuby Tech who first discovered this patent. Um, I believe I could be wrong either way, and we'll try to remember to link their Twitter account in the video description. Now, um, as I said at the beginning of this, this patent is pretty complicated, but it essentially has a couple of eyebrow-raising things that, if you're familiar with how RDNA 2, or basically the consoles currently handle ray tracing, the patent definitely has things which differ compared to that. I think it might also become quite obvious by looking at how these images that you're seeing on screen from Mark Cerny differ from AMD's implementation of this same technology as well. One of the key changes which is mentioned here, um, and they are referring to the ray tracing elements of the GPU here as an RTU, ray tracing unit, is that it can shorten the ray. Now, this is to do with whether an object itself is opaque or whether it's transparent. So, for example, if it's a pane of glass which has no transformative effect on the light itself, that's opaque. But, oh, sorry, that would be transparent. But if an object is, for example, a vase or a car or what have you, well, that obviously would mean that light cannot pass through it. Therefore, this would allow the ray itself to shorten because basically there's no point going past the intersection point of the ray. In other words, 
you light can't travel past a wall, for example. So testing past the wall is just pointless because rays cannot bounce past a well a solid wall. Um, furthermore, there are other mentions as well because specifically says that the RTU functionality can handle be handled asynchronously with respect to the shader program. So for example, the GPU could run other things, which could be, well, anything, for example, geometry in theory, while the ray tracing unit is busy uh, finding intersections. Now, this is actually kind of similar in theory anyway, although again, I am using a patent here. Um, it sounds a little bit like an asynchronous compute instruction on how this functions. Now, all of this is really cool. And honestly, it goes to show you that the next stage of ray tracing is again, of course, going to improve in efficiency. Personally speaking, I do not believe that this patent pertains to the PlayStation 5. Now, I will admit, when I first read it really briefly, just kind of skim read it, I did actually think it was uh, pertaining to the PS5. And in fact, I said so on Twitter. I said that, you know, a really quick skim read, I think it is pertaining to the PS5. However, when I started to look more deeply, I was like, wait, that doesn't quite match what we believe the PS5 would do in terms of its ray tracing capabilities, because essentially it's identical to what AMD have um, used for RDNA 2 for the RX 6000 series. So I believe that this is possibly in relation to new hardware. Now it is possible that this hardware is on the PlayStation 5 because at the end of the day, Sony haven't fully detailed and disclosed all of the elements of the PlayStation 5's GPU, which is ultra frustrating by the way, but I don't personally, from the knowledge I have, think that this is pertaining to the PS5. I think that this is probably the PlayStation 5 Pro. And another reason I believe that this is probably the case, and I've already put a video out on this a couple of months ago, several months ago, is that to my understanding, the PS5 Pro is a real. And while it does double roughly the performance of the system, I've heard that ray tracing is an area of considerable improvement. Further to this, I've also been with the understanding that Sony have been really working on the efficiency of ray tracing and upscaling of graphics elements. And this is one of the things that I'm working on uh, discussing in a future video. Now, again, I want to stress that I've only re read this pattern to a degree and I've not read the following, the follow up details yet. And there are some other things that I've been li uh, linked, excuse me. So this is my early preliminary findings. So ultimately I could be wrong here, but I don't believe that this does pertain to the PS5. Initially I did, but I don't think it does. Because from my understanding of this patent, it does not seem to marry up with what AMD's disclosures of how their ray tracing works. And AMD have disclosed this A, officially with, well, um, for example, they've sent me an RDNA2 card, so they kind of gave me press briefing and stuff of that. But you can even kind of look at AMD's official slide yourself. Furthermore, it doesn't seem to match up based upon uh, AMD's own patents of ray tracing. So... Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, to be honest. Speaking of interesting, let's discuss things that perhaps aren't so happy for NVIDIA, as there have been a couple of really interesting things that have happened, and it all really stems from a cyber attack which has occurred on NVIDIA. Now, I will say that while I find this stuff really interesting from a technical perspective, um, I don't necessarily like, you know, like cyber attacks and that type of thing. That's just, you know, my disclosure. Um, but there are some really interesting uh, discoveries, shall we say. And one of them does pertain to a future graphics architecture. I would like to give credit to, to uh, video cards for this specific that set of images as well. Apparently, they actually were sent images regarding the... Um, regarding the hack, although they've said that they've not actually looked at the hack, you know, specifically to verify it, but they do have uh, images of what, you know, some of the some of the files. And you can read it yourself. There's Ada, which is Ada Lovelace. Now, to my understanding, this is going to be powering the RTX 40 series of graphics cards. 
Then we have Hopper. And then finally, there's Blackwell. Now, Hopper and Blackwell, I believe, are going to be for accelerated computing. In other words, it's going to be essentially for service high-performance computing. Meanwhile, Ada is going to be basically purely for gaming. And this does seem to marry up with a couple of leaks that I've put out myself. I didn't specifically mention Blackwell because, honestly, I didn't know it existed. But I had been told that there were future architectures and NVIDIA were going to really start to crank up its divergence in architectures. And honestly, this is nothing new. NVIDIA have done it previously, but I was told that they're going to really start to diverge the paths of their uh, research. And yeah, further to this, there's also been confirmation, quote unquote, as to the core configurations for Lovelace. So uh, going down the skew list, we have 144, 96, 48, and finally, 32 SMs. As a bit of an aside, 3dcenter.org on Twitter have done a really nice job compiling all of the leaks into one handy dandy format. And you can see yourself that AD102 is going to feature the most powerful um, you know, configuration. And then obviously AD106 is going to have the lower end. So for example, AD102 is going to feature a 384-bit bus, 24 gigabytes of memory, and this is going to be powering the RTX 4080 and probably the 4090. To my personal understanding, the cores are running at around 2.5 gigahertz, although of course this is kind of early stuff, so for all we know that information could be totally and utterly wrong across the board. Now, I do believe that um, AD102 in particular is going to be pretty damn beastly. I'm going to be really curious to see how it does fare against AMD's next generation products. Um, it's going to be definitely a very interesting state of affairs because NVIDIA have also had the source code for DLSS leaked as well. Um, there's not too much to say about this because... I mean, obviously, NVIDIA are probably not too happy about it, although it does open up a lot of intrigue, perhaps, for, you know, people who want to, let's say, you know, have the code implemented into emulators or, uh, you know, we've seen some really cool things, for example, with, I think it was Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, support FSR and other things. The only thing is with this... Um, because this code is going to become essentially freely available, it's going to mean that, yeah, I mean, NVIDIA's lawyers are going to be watching for stuff like, you know, like Hawks. And of course, I don't blame them at all. So when you have competitors, for example, uh, Intel working on XCSS, which kind of works similarly, um, it's just going to be really interesting to see how all of this, you know, how all of this kind of, uh, ends up. I personally wouldn't be surprised um, if this does push, and I'm saying this without insider information here, I am I wouldn't be surprised if this does push NVIDIA to just officially open things up. Um, I would love for DLSS to work on competitor hardware. I have mentioned previously that I wouldn't be surprised in the long run if it did, because XCSF does work on competitor hardware. Like, um, I actually put out a video quite recently detailing XCSS. Uh, Intel, of course, were helping me with that video. And, you know, I do think that the adoption rate of XCSS, assuming the quality is good, it's going to be pretty, you know, I think the adoption rate is going to be really good. But that said, DLSS definitely has the lead at the moment in the market. And it's basically NVIDIA's lead to lose, if that makes any sense. Anyway, Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a likey. And I will see you soon. Take care of yourselves and have an amazing day. Bye for now.